Hi, and welcome to another episode of Soul Level Conversations. I'm so excited that you are here with us today because I have a beautiful guest here. Her name is Shannon, and she's going to share her question in just a second. And it is a super relevant, juicy one, especially if you are wanting a baby and a family and you are single still. And so we'll get into our question in just a moment. That was just a sneak peek. Um, and so soul level conversations is all about really supporting successful, smart, ambitious women that really have it all in many ways, right? They've got the life, they've got the career, they've got the friends, but the missing piece is their love life. And you can't seem to put your finger on why, why is this not going in the direction that I want? And maybe it's been not going in the direction that you want for years. And you're curious, you've tried the affirmations, you've tried the law of attraction, you know, you've tried lots of things, reading books, watching podcasts, listening to YouTube videos, and yet you still feel stuck and you can't figure out what's going on. So here at Soul Level Conversations, we get to your karmic patterns, which is at the root of really what's impacting you in your love life and what's maybe holding you back. And without going to that deep of a level, often we are confused and lost and trying to figure this out by ourselves. So today we're gonna to show you what that looks like through what Shannon is sharing so that you can see for yourself how this might be relevant to you too. So Shannon, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Hey, thank you. I'm so excited too. You almost made me cry. I'm like, yes, get to my karmic problems. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it must, honestly, it must be something going on because um, I feel like I keep running into the same issues over and over and over again. And I know it must be me. It must be something that I'm attracting or, um, needing to learn. So yeah. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for all your, all your work. Oh, you're so welcome. And you know, it's hard to, to kind of balance admitting that it's us without going into like, is there something wrong with me? You know? And what I say is that there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. But there are these kind of blind spots that are in your system right now around love in particular. So if you don't know how to look at those blind spots, you're going to just stay in a place where you feel stuck, right? So it's not that there's anything wrong with you, but it is you. There's something in you that is creating what's happening in your outer world. And we just want to look at that. Yes. Yeah. Please, <laughs> please, let's look at it. Let's find out. I'm just like exactly what you said. I, um, I've done, I do a lot of spiritual work and I try and, you know, do my meditation and my affirmations, like you said, and listen to podcasts and read books and do yoga. And it's just, what's up? Like, <laughs> why do I keep attracting unavailable emotionally? unavailable, non-committal uh, people. And just so you and the audience know, like I'll probably try and use gender neutral terms because I do date masculine identified women and trans men, non-binary people. So I, I'm completely attracted to the masculine energy, yeah. just um, in a different shape. Absolutely. Yeah. So share with me. I love that you shared all of that. Um, and share with me what your question is. Okay. So 2020 was a transformational year for me. I had my heart broken probably two or three times, like every year. <laughs> and, but I came out of it just feeling like, you know, I don't have time to waste anymore on starting a family. I turned 41 this year and I'm already nervous as probably a lot of people are and coming into our forties. Like I yeah. still want to have children and everything around me is telling me that I need to do it like five years ago. Yep. Um, and I don't want to waste any more time trying to date and find someone to start a family with because I feel like you spend six months getting to know somebody and you think it's going somewhere. And 
then they disappear. That doesn't work. And then there's another six months and each six months, two, six months equals a year. I don't have another year to put off having a family. And so I decided that, Hey, it's okay to start, have a baby on my own. Um, it's not what I wanted, which is why I don't have one now, but it's kind of like, I don't have any more time to waste on miss, um, missing my shot in my dating life. So yeah. I'm okay with it. I've gotten really comfortable. I started planning. I, you know, doing all these really, I'm doing my womb yoga, you know, I'm just yeah. getting ready to um, go down this, this journey of having a baby. And also my businesses are, blooming because I can see that I don't need any masculine help in doing some of the bigger things that I want to do career-wise. So I have this strength where I just feel totally independent. I don't need a partner to have a baby. I don't need a partner to do some of the um, the businesses that I want to work on. And so now I kind of feel like I'm closed off to it. Yeah. And so my question is, And I even kind of feel kind of weird saying it because my question is, how do I not close myself off to love and the possibility of having a healthy, loving, committed, monogamous, all those wonderful things, supportive relationship? How can I stay open to that um, now that I've become so, feel so independent and powerful? Yeah. And this is such a great question because. I mean, so many women feel like this approaching their 40s into their 40s, right? Um, And a lot of people feel like this. And so, um, you know, I mean, just on a personal note, I had my son when I was like 39, right? And, you know, I, you know, it's just, it's anything is possible is is the reason I just said that. But here's what I want to ask you is even, you know, even when you were in your twenties or thirties, did you really feel like you just really leaned back on independence? Like that was kind of, is that like a bit of an anthem for you? Um, when you say lean back, do you mean like, did I feel really independent? Yeah, exactly. Like, was that something that you just really like asserted for yourself? Yeah. I've always, I've always been very independent. <laughs> so it's something my mom was like, as even as a child, she was like, you're so independent. You know, like it was a really big thing. I've, I've moved all over the country. I've done all kinds of things and I've done it all by myself. And I don't, I, I kind of feel like it was one thing I couldn't do by myself was to start a family. And um, so I can kind of, in my reflection, I can kind of see how I may be the problem here. (laughs) Well, listen, it's coming from somewhere. So when you think about, you know, your childhood and what your parents shared, what did you, what did you like and dislike? Um, What I disliked was, well, maybe I'll start with what I liked. What I liked was that out of all of my friends, I was the only one who had parents who were married and together. So I grew up in a very traditional household where I had my mom, my dad, me and my brother, and we were a unit. What I did not like is that there was a lot of fighting. It was a pretty hostile environment 99.9% of the time. Yeah. And so you know, I'm curious because it was such a hostile environment. Did you feel like I'm just going to, you know, sometimes children make different decisions. Some, some, some kids will be like, I'm going to get involved and try to fix this. You know, that's something I did. Um, or some children rebel and are like, I'm, I'm out of here. Like, this is something I don't want anything to be. I don't want to be a part of any of this. What did you do? I was out. I was out. <laughs> yeah. Um, I left. I mean, I spent most of my time in, as a teenager, as soon as I had a little bit of freedom, I was gone. And right after I graduated from high school, I was gone. I've been all around the country and I never went back. 
Yeah. And is that because of the fighting you would say or the volatility of it? Um, I would say, yes, that is what that's well, no, I wouldn't say it was because of the fighting. I would, the reason I haven't gone back is probably because, you know, it's still just weird energy. I think we, the, the baby boomer generation, my parents are baby boomers. Their energy is kind of weird, you know, <laughs> you know, I love them. Some of them are great, but some of them are a little bit messed up. No judgment. I'm my own messed up person, but um, <laughs> totally. No, this is just so. Just so we're clear, and 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 also people watching this, this is just your translations, and we all have translations, yeah. and so there's no judgment around your translation because this translation has shaped you, you know, and so whatever you saw and how you took it in is what's creating some of these patterns. So there is no judgment in that at all. And everybody does this, no human being doesn't do it. And so we're just calling out, what is that thing that you translated, what you saw and what you decided? Well, I decided that I was definitely, I'm from Baltimore and I decided I was definitely not getting stuck or staying there very early on. Um, I wanted to leave, <laughs> so, so I, I left right after high school and I just I've been successful every move that I've made by myself I've been very successful doing it the only only time I'm not really in a good place is when it comes when I have a relationship they, yeah they mess me all the way up yeah and so that's super normal for any, for you and for anybody watching this, that is the space that everything will come to the surface because in your work, you can still stay unattached in some ways, but when it comes to love, when it comes to letting somebody into your heart, into your space, into a commitment, into your vulnerabilities, into, um, you know, sharing and creating a life together every insecurity that you have will come to the surface. You are not alone. And so that's what you're experiencing. And that is what happens. But for you in particular, what I'm noticing is if I can call this out, you can tell me if it resonates with you, but just coming from a family that I think you felt like they were maybe old school in certain ways of thinking, or they were just fighting so much that that tension, that anxiety, that that, that sits in the air sometimes when there's a lot of fighting that happens in a family, you were, you just resist that. And yet they're also still together, your parents, you know? And so what has translated in your subconscious is like, oh, okay. Love equals like this volatility, this craziness, and then you stay together. You know what I mean? And you're in resistance of that. You're like, I don't want it to, anything to do with that. So when you have that in your subconscious and it feels like your freedom is going to get taken away because you're going to get into a relationship and love means all of that right now. And because of that, your freedom gets taken away. You're going to be like, no, I'm okay. And you'll find ways to be like, no, I'm okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. Does that resonate with you? It, it definitely it definitely resonates with me. It, it resonates. Um, I think I do that. And I think the people who I attract, I think they do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. And here's the thing about independence is that there isn't anything wrong with it. It's just an illusion. It's an illusion that we believe that we can do it all and be it all by ourselves. But the reality of it is, is that every interaction in our day is because of others you know, down to like the food on our plate is because of others. And so we have this illusion of what independence means because it feels like freedom to say I'm independent, you know? So what we're actually searching for is freedom, but we kind of put it under the category of independence, but it's, it's an illusion. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And I feel like I hear the, the guys in my life say that so much, like they want their freedom. And I feel like I'm like the one who's saying, well, no, <laughs> you know, no, choose me and choose this little family instead. But I can, I do truly believe that. And I've been working a lot on 
seeing my relationships as a reflection of me and like wh- how am I like this too and right. so I think the way I've seen myself isn't necessarily how I really am or really what my energy is saying yes it's subconscious it's not conscious does that make sense yeah So you're calling in people that don't want to stick around because ultimately you're in a space where you're like, this feels like too much for me too. Even though your desire is to have something that lasts, you know, where you get to feel like you're building a family together. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's just keeping you safe. That's what it's doing because there's this idea of what relationships mean. And for you, it actually means something you're resisting right now, which is volatility, which is like, you know, um, taking maybe trapped, feeling trapped, feeling like you don't have a say in things and you still have to stick it out. You have to stay in it, you know? Um, And so does that all resonate? Cause I know you're not going too much into what you're like, you may not want to call out your parents too much. And I get that. Um, so I'm just kind of, kind of inferring some things. No, you're, you're yes. This all makes sense. I hope you can send me a recording because normally I'm the one who's on it. Like, you know, I got this, but right now my head's spinning. Cause I'm <laughs> thinking like, yeah, I got to chew on this because I ne- I've never seen it this way. Yeah. What are you seeing in this moment that you couldn't um, see before? That the same thing, this is emotional, but the same thing that I always say people are doing to me in some kind of way is what I'm doing to them. And maybe in some way, like what I'm doing to myself because I always attract these people who are very independent, you know, powerful people. And I feel like they don't want to get trapped in a relationship. They don't want to commit. And they don't want to take the time that it takes to um, have a relate, develop a relationship. And so, Maybe, well, what you're saying is, and what I have to really look at more is how am I like that? <laughs> how yeah. is that actually, I believe that, that you attract your mirror. So how is that me? Yeah. And I'm going to share with you, like, Like if I were to ask you, would you want your parents' relationship? What would you say? No. Right. And why would you say no? I mean, now they have a pretty good relationship, but I don't want to fight for 25 years. Good. I want to see the best in my partner, not the worst. I want Hmm. to have the less. The reason why I'm okay with being a single mom is because I'll be a a single mom any day before I have children and raise them in a hostile environment. So just just hear what you just said. (laughs) Just hear that because not everybody has it that way, but you literally have it that way. I would rather be a single mom than raise a child in a hostile environment. Right. Like it's only those two options. Right. It's not, those aren't the only two options, but in your mind and your subconscious, it's the only two options. Yeah. So I would prefer single than hostile. Wow. You're good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, you know, the, the work around this is to actually see your parents' relationship differently because that's, what's been burned into your subconscious is, you know, it's either hostile or I do it on my own and I'm good, Yeah, you know? And so it's about seeing that. Sure. They fought. Yes. Is that cool? Not really. And, and, and where was that coming from? Why were they doing that? What had them doing that? You know, um, 
what did it actually mean? Because I grew up with a similar situation. My parents argued all the time and I would have told you like, oh, they should have gotten a divorce a long time ago, but they stayed together because of culture and religion, you know, and, and children. Um, and the truth is that that's completely untrue. And so when I sought out to see how they're in it to win it together because they love one another, because it's coming from a true space of love, that's when it changed everything for me. And I no longer say that. I said, I said that sentence for almost 30 years and I will never say that again. Like, and not just because I'm trying not to say it. It's actually deeply ingrained in me that I see the love, even when I'm around them, even when they're fighting, because it still happens to this day, I see the love. I don't see my resistance to it anymore. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not saying I don't get annoyed. It's I get annoyed sometimes, but it's not like if I was annoyed before it was a 10 out of one out of 10, 10 being in the highest. Now, if I get annoyed, it's kind of like a five, you know, six, five, six, some, something like that. Sometimes even lower. So it, the, the, the intensity of that is reduced so that I can have space to really let love in. Right. Because if I see love as just like, you got to stick it out and you know, you're going to argue all the time, then I don't want anything to do with that. And the truth of it is, is that even when I got married, I did do that exact same pattern because what you resist persists and it persisted in me. I literally recreated the entire pattern. And so maybe you've seen that in yourself in relationships. Have you seen that in yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely, as I apologize to the baby boomers who could be watching because I am my mom. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what happens because the resistance is so strong that you just start to recreate the pattern again. And then that reiterates the belief, like, see, I really don't want to be in a relationship. Look what I turn into. Look at what they turn into. You know what I mean? Um, I should just do this on my own. So long story short is you have to see them differently. So the first kind of baby step towards really emotionally shifting it, not just in the mind, you can't just be like, okay, I'm going to start to see them as like, they love each other. That's not going to work. All right. You can't just change it up here. Um, it has to be like a real feeling shifts inside of you. And so the first thing that you could do is just ask them, like, I know that, you know, you guys are constantly arguing and fighting and you have him for all these years. And I actually need to hear the positive. I need to hear what about your relationship keeps you going. You know, what, what attracted you to one another when it was like the first couple of dates? You know, what had you go through life like this and still stick it all through? And you can't use children or culture as a reason, you know, like you literally say that you can't use culture or children as a reason and hear from them. Like what, what has them stay in it for this long, you know? Um, and the next step is to see what their relationship was like with their mom and dad. Did they have the, a similar pattern or not? So that you can see the depth of this, that this wasn't just something that happened between your mom and dad, that this happened because of things that they brought in from their upbringings into the relationship, which is what we all do. We all do that. And there's always going to be some conflict within that, but there's ways to move through that conflict to reach new levels of freedom and intimacy. Okay. Does that so make sense? Yeah, I hear you saying that it's kind of um, some of the issues I could be going through in my relationship are like um, karma generational that's been kind of passed down. Um, and I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to have conversations with my parents um, about anything, anything. <laughs> But, but I am definitely willing to give it a try. Good. So I've been doing this work for over 10 years. I've worked with every kind of parent you can think of and every kind of situation you can think of um, from, you know, abuse to, I think my parents are perfect. I've dealt with everything from those extremes 
and in, 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 in between. And I will say this, they, they, they are willing to talk. You, you will be very surprised. It's just very uncomfortable for you to actually be opening up in this way with them. Okay. And so you're facing that discomfort more than anything. You're right. Because totally you're agree. having to let them in and you've really convinced yourself that you don't need anybody. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. But you do, we all need our parents, you know, and I'm not saying, I know there's lots of different kinds of situations out there. And I'm not saying this a hundred percent, nothing's ever a hundred percent. Right. But, um, on the average, you know, as children, we, we want to know that we were loved and that we were special and that we're important and that our parents care for us. And if we shut that down, we have little space to let love in. Yeah. Okay. So you'll have to open yourself back up to that first. And then that will set the tone for you to see the kinds of people you draw back into your life from there. But that healing is really big and crucial. You could have told me to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Trust me. I hear it all the time. They're like, oh, this is the last thing I want to do. And I'm just probably not going to do it, actually. <laughs> I literally, you could have said, Shannon, no food for 30 days. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> all right. Smoothies it is. But this is the last thing I want to do, actually. <laughs> but whatever it takes, you know, um, yeah, yeah. And I want you to feel safe in it. You know, you can have it on the phone and, but it, it, it does require you to open up and say like, I'm looking at some of my own, you know, patterns in love and I'm seeing this and I see that it comes from some of the, the fear that I have from what I saw between you and dad, or, you know, if you're talking to dad and you and mom, and I mean, I actually really need to hear something positive and, and hear why you guys are together, you know? So yeah, it's letting them in, in this way. Um, but it's still, it still is safe for you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. For you and your situation. Cause I can, I can tell you're not in a position where that would, that would be bad. Yeah, no, it would, it would be fine. They, we are, my birthday is actually on father's day. And so it only happens once every seven birthdays, you know, yeah. Day on Sunday. So it's this birthday. And so it's really, really special. My parents are older and seven more Father's Days. I hope we have another one, but this one's super special. So for the first time ever, my mom, my dad, and my brother are coming to visit me. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yes. So I will definitely um, have time to have this conversation and I'm going to reframe it so that I'm excited about it. And I think it's <laughs> and um, yeah, if this is what it takes, I'm doing it. Yeah. And um, it's often a lot scarier than it is once you do it. Um, but, you know, here's if this motivates you, everybody's motivated differently. I don't know if this will motivate you or not. But if this motivates you, like you have this divine opportunity to really heal something with where you came from, with where you came from, and you don't know if you'll have another year, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. With them. Uh, yeah. You know, if that motivates you, that doesn't motivate everybody. It definitely motivates me because it's, it's healing, not just for myself, it's healing for my bloodline. And so that's important. Yeah. It's very important for when you even have your child. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for, you know, bringing such a vulnerable topic to the surface and sharing it with me in this forum so that other people can really heal and learn and go deeper too. Um, you know, the work that I do can sometimes feel definitely confrontational in the sense of like, ah, uh, do I really need to do this? You know, it's the last thing most people want to do. And yet if we kind of anchor into our why 
for ourselves and for our life, it can just move you forward in such a beautiful way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm expecting miracles. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. That's a good affirmation. <laughs> I'm expecting miracles. That's brilliant. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon, for opening your heart and mind today and just letting me plant a seed, if nothing else. All right. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I'll see all of you on the next episode of Soul Level Conversations. If you loved this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And underneath this video, if you're interested in learning more, there is a free masterclass that you could take. It's 45 minutes. It's called the five shifts to really attract in your soul level love and, you know, be call in that soul level love, bring down your walls and be accepted in love for exactly who you are. So take a look at that. It's a really a good step forward in transforming your mindset and how you're thinking about things and, and, and really seeing your love life. So take a look at that. That link will be right under this video and I will see you on the next episode. Bye.